In this video, I'm going to fix the spindle issue with my milling machine. I've got a PM30 that I converted over to a CNC, and I converted the drive from a gear drive into a belt drive, and that worked out pretty good, but I'm still getting some issues with vibration, noise, heat, above about 1500 RPM, which I need for cutting aluminum. The original issue was with this gear drive mechanism. This sat in the top of the head, and we had this big bearing that really doesn't like going very fast, and then this other bottom bearing down here. And this was actually misaligned with the spindle, so it was forward a little bit, let's say, and that was creating a lot of friction and making the whole thing heat up. So I'm gonna get rid of this, but that leaves the whole top portion of the spindle, you know, pretty much just floating in the air with the pulley up top, so it needs to be supported somehow. So I'm going to make a little bearing plate that sits on the top of the head, holds a bearing, and then has a little spacer in it that will then hold the spline of the spindle and keep everything supported for machining. The first thing I needed to do was to cut the stock down to its rough size for machining. I used some 5 8 inch stock that I had on hand, and I used my sliding DeWalt miter saw that I have a, um, I think, 120 tooth carbide tip blade on. It goes relatively slow, but it leaves a really nice clean cut. The stock was still a little bit too large in one dimension, so I decided to bring it over to the bandsaw and cut that little piece off. I would have used the sliding miter saw again, but unfortunately the piece is that small, I just don't really feel comfortable getting my hands that close to the blade when cutting aluminum. So I just put on the bandsaw. It goes a little bit slower and doesn't leave nearly as clean of an edge, but it worked just fine for this. During the process of troubleshooting the spindle issues I've had, I've been taking the head on and off of the mill multiple different times, and now that I'm going to be machining something, I just need to make sure that the head is square. So I'm using a spindle square to do exactly that, and get it as close as I can so that at least my bore for the bearing is squared up to the head. And just so I didn't run into any surprises later, I decided to just double check my vise and make sure that it's squared up too. I'm not really all that concerned about the accuracy of these parts, but I might as well check all these things before I start cutting. Okay, now it's time to finally start making some cuts. Uh, I've got everything mounted here in the vise, and um, I just kind of did an X on the middle of the piece. I'm referencing right on the middle of the workpiece, um, and that's how my cam is set up. Uh, I like to start with the drilling operations first, then I can get my holes in place, then it kind of gives me a rough idea where everything's laid out. Um, I should do a better job of clearing the chips out of here. i got to do a better um, peck operation that actually breaks up the chips, but eh, for four holes it works just fine. This is where all the fun begins. After the holes were drilled, the next step was to do the outer contour. I was using a 3 8 inch two flute end mill and going a little bit faster than I'm used to going. I'm still relatively new to machining and everyone always says if you're hearing noise or hearing chatter, speed it up, you need a faster feed rate. I think I'm running anywhere between 30 and 40 inch per minute on here with I think maybe a 20 inch per minute plunge. I have a relatively low step over and I think the depth of cut is um, 50 thousandths or so. The cut went relatively well. I did get a little bit of um, chatter in the surface finish, but that's to be expected. I'm just kind of roughing this out, and I don't really care that much about the surface finish here. After the outer contour was done, the next thing was to bore the um, inner hole in the middle, which is um, where the bearing and the spline and everything will sit. I chose to use a 3 8 inch roughing end mill, and I kind of made a couple of um, interesting decisions here that I would probably do differently next time. And what I was going to do is do a um, contour just around the outside, drill out like kind of a plug of the aluminum, and then go back and finish it with a boring head. Unfortunately, I ran into some issues, which we'll see later. The other problem that I had was I didn't fully secure this bit down. So you can see it just kind of keeps pushing the bit further into the holder. And that's why I ultimately had to stop this operation, re-zero the bit, tighten it up, and then go back and redo this. And unfortunately, as you can see, um, doing a slot this deep in the aluminum without any coolant, I ended up snapping the roughing end mill. I was going relatively fast. I think I was going about 30, 35 inches per minute um, with a relatively deep plunge. And so unfortunately, I, I kind of suspected this would happen, but I was just gonna give it a shot. I ended up welding a bunch of chips onto the outer flutes and that just created a lot of friction, created a lot of heat, and then it just ended up binding the end mill in there and it snapped. So I went a little slower 
with a um, standard end mill the other time and just kind of finished out the bore. The last thing I needed to do on the top of the plate was to open up the bore with a boring bar and boring head. It was about 10 thousandths off, so I just used this to um, open it up a little bit and give it a better, smoother bore for the bearing. After that, I just used a face mill to face off the top of the plate, and then we'll move on to the backside. Earlier in the video, I talked about how I had to retram the head because I had taken it on off many times. I remembered that, but I didn't remember about the ring light. I just kind of pressed the ring light in place, but I didn't attach the set screw. So of course it came crashing down and I had to stop the first part of that cut, which was actually going pretty good. Um, and that was one of the first of many issues I had with the bottom side. Yep, it happened again. Look at how low the end mill is. Um, after I put the ring light back in, um, I thought everything was good, but um, after all the chatter and everything else, this one decided to loosen up as well and it popped down. You can see there's some wear there on the vice jaws where it was kind of rubbing around and on that edge of the piece you can actually see that it kind of stepped its way down and it shouldn't have been cutting anywhere near that low. Thankfully I was able to stop it in time or else it would have ran right into the back jaw and it probably would have snapped the bit. So lesson learned, get some really good wrenches for your um, call it holders and make sure everything is really tight. I'm actually going to order some right now. Thankfully, the rest of the part was pretty uneventful. Um, I went and used the rougher again and um, used the adaptive clearing in the HSM Express and um, carved out all the material that I needed to. And then after that was done, I used a half inch four flute end mill and cleaned everything up. During the whole process of, you know, the ring light and the um, end mill slipping out, I had some gouges down in the um, bottom face of the part, so the Z plane was actually a little uneven. So when I did the half inch end mill for the finishing passes, I just kind of dropped it down a little bit in cam. I think I dropped it down maybe 20 thousandths of an inch, and that actually evened out the whole bottom of it. So in the end, everything was actually fine, and this part portion of the part really isn't all that critical as long as it lays flat on the head of the mill and um, the center bore is small enough just to fit inside where the old bearing went, that's good enough. After all of that I just uh, broke out the fly cutter again and faced off the back just to make it look nice and pretty. So here's the part. Turned out pretty good um, considering all the issues I had. There was one little problem though. it's ever so slightly too wide. When I measured this initially, I kind of just rough estimated in my head it was 4.5 inches, so I made the part 4.25 inches to give me a little bit of wiggle room between it, but it's actually 4.22 between here. So what I did is I just shaved off the sides, which actually turned out to be pretty cool because on one of the sides I had gouged down into um, the side of it because a bit slipped down. So I just cut off uh, about 75 thousandths on each side which was just enough for it to fit directly in the channel and have a little bit of wiggle room back and forth for adjustment. Last thing to do is just to assemble this together. So I've got my ball bearing that's gonna end up supporting the shaft. I've got the plate here, and then I have this little guy which is a little hat or a little spacer that will go inside there. This goes inside there, spindle comes through, and then the pulley sits on top of the whole thing for the belt drive. And the bore on this is ever so slightly too big. It measures fine, but it's gonna take a little bit of a press fit to get inside there. Um, but this one is actually really good. It fits just right, takes a little bit of pressing, and fits right in there. It isn't going anywhere, and it's a nice, smooth fit. The last thing I'm gonna do before I assemble all of this is I'm gonna throw it in the vibratory tumbler to get a little bit better finish on it. I've already kind of um, polished it a little bit with some Scotch-Brite but I just kind of want to see what kind of finish I can get out of it in the tumbler. Once I got the parts out of the tumbler, they had a nice kind of satin finish and all the edges were knocked down so they weren't nearly as sharp. The next step was to actually mount it to the head itself. I drilled one pilot hole, you know, kind of after lining everything up in the front left corner of the mounting plate, and that was going to serve as, you know, kind of my template for the other three holes. Really, I didn't care, you know, if this thing was a little crooked or whatever, as long as it was lined up with the spindle, that's really all I cared about. So I tightened down the first hole and made sure that the plate was, 
you know, roughly aligned with everything. And then I went ahead and drilled the opposite corner, um, drilled and tapped that hole, and then did the other two holes after that, just to make sure that all four secured the plate. And I kind of, you know, spun it and rotated a little bit here and there just to make sure that everything was still centered. I think I was using a number eight, like a 832 screw, and there was a quarter inch hole in the mounting plate. So there was a little bit of wiggle room for adjustment. I just really didn't want there to be any wiggling in that plate or you know to have it really tightly clamped down and be off center so i wanted to give myself a little bit of wiggle room for adjustment you might notice that the little spacer is actually a bit shorter on top than it was in the um, previous images that's because it was a little bit too tall um, the belt drive ran a little bit too high so i ended up having to shave that down on the lathe and change that up a little bit and everything here is a pretty tight press fit and you can see that I'm using some red Loctite to not only hold in the spacer, but also to hold on the um, edge of the bearing as well. I figured there's gonna be a lot of motion, a lot of rattling in here, being that it's coming directly off the spindle. So I just used some red Loctite just to make sure that things weren't moving around or rattling loose. And also the spline isn't an exact um, set diameter the whole way. It kind of gets a little thinner in places, a little thicker in other places. It's not extremely precise, so I decided to use a little bit of red Loctite just to hold that spacer in place since there is no set screw and it's just kind of press fit in there. And hopefully that should stop any rattles from happening. Here's what I've been waiting for. Ever since I got this mill, the spindle has always been an issue. I wish I had some early videos of it running, but it had kind of this like grinding, crunching sound. And then I replaced the lower bearings down here and it still had like a really nasty sound to it. And then it was heating up. So I've had issues since day one on this. So let's see if we can finally fix it. I've got it on a relatively low speed on the low spindle. So let's see what happens. Sounds great. Um, no issues, no rattling, nothing like that. So I think it's good. Before I call this project good and move on to something else, I just wanted to see if the RPM range is within reason, so I started with the low speed pulley. All of these readings look pretty good, I just need to go back into the controller and make the adjustments. I actually turned everything way down, the current and the max RPM, just because I was having issues with the spindle and I first went to diagnose the controller, so I can actually probably get another 500 to 1000 RPM on the top end with um, the adjustments in the controller. So now the spindle is finally fixed, so I can move on to some much more fun projects.